we're talking about domain and range of function in this video. Let's take a function fx equals 2x minus 1. Okay. Now, what is the natural domain of this function and what is the natural range of the function? Natural domain means that all the possible values that x can take. So what are the possible values that x can take if fx is equal to 2x minus 1? x can be any negative value, for example, minus 20. x can even be any positive value, for example, 50. And x can also be 0. So any value of x can be part of the domain of the function. So x, we write that the natural domain is x is an element of real number. Let me try to show this to you graphically. The graph of 2x minus 1 is going to be a rising line passing through minus 1. Now it's an ever-increasing line. So x can have any value on the x-axis. That's why the natural domain of this function is any value, any real value. So x is an element of real number. Okay, what about the natural range? Now range or the natural range are the allowed y values. So if x can have any value, y can also have any value. Y will be positive for certain values of X. Y will be negative for certain values of X. Even Y will become zero at some point. So Y will have all values of X as well. Sorry, all values, all values possible. So FX is also an element of real numbers. X can take any value. So the domain of the function fx is x is an element of real numbers and y can also take any value. So y is also an element of real number. This is the natural domain of the function 2x minus 1. You can also write the range as y is an element of real number. Both of these notations are acceptable. Okay, now let's talk about restricted domain. What if the domain is restricted and it is x is between, let's say, negative 1 and less than and equals to 3? That means they're talking about this part only. Let's say we have negative 1 here and let's say 3 here. Then they're only talking about this part. So if x is between minus 1 and 3, then the y or fx will be between. When x is negative 1, we get negative 3. And when x is 3, we get 5. So this would be 5 for x is equal to 3. And this would be negative 3 for x is minus 1. So the range is starting from minus 3 and end at, ends at 5, but you also have to write an equals to sign. Because x is included in the domain, so 5 will also be included in the range. Okay, so if the domain is from minus 1 to 3, where 3 is included, then the range is between minus 3 to 5, where 5 is included. Okay. What if the domain is x is greater than, let's say, 5? Then your range would be fx is greater than, uh, substitute 5 into x minus 1, we get 9. So then fx is greater than 9. And if there's an equals to sign here, You'll also write an equals to sign here. Okay, now let's change the function. Okay, if the function is 
let's say 3x squared plus 1. Okay, then what is the natural domain? And then what is the natural range? X can have any value. It can be a positive value. It can be a negative value. It can be zero. There's no restriction on X. So again, X is an element of real number. Now, Y would be restricted. I mean, if FX or Y will be restricted, it cannot have any value. For example, there's no way this becomes negative ever. Even if X is negative, because of the square, it becomes positive. And then you always get a positive answer. So Fx cannot have negative values that we know. Okay, so if you plot the graph, that will make finding the range a lot simpler. This is 3x squared plus 1. We know x squared looks like this. Then 3x squared will be slightly uh, shrink uh, horizontally. So it's like a kind of a squeezed version of x squared. And then plus 1 means that it goes one unit up. So this is the function y equals 3x squared plus 1 or fx is equals to 3x plus 1. Now notice that the range is, or the values of y, are always greater than 1. They can never be less than 1. So then the range fx is going to be greater than and also equals to 1 because 1 is a value on the graph. So you have to write equals to as well. So that is the natural range of the function 3x squared plus 1. Okay, what if I restrict the domain? Let's say that the domain is now x is uh, less than uh, minus 1. Okay, so if x is less than minus 1, let's say minus 1 is here, then they're talking about this region. This is where x is less than minus 1. So now let's see what is the value of y when x is minus 1. We get... 3 times negative 1 squared plus 1 is going to be 4. So this value here is 4. So the value of fx is greater than 4. This is going to be the range. So if x is less than negative 1, then fx is greater than 4 because this is the minimum value the graph will take and then it will have all the values above that okay and if there were an equals to sign here we would have put an equals to sign here as well okay what if the domain is x is greater than two okay so two is somewhere over here what is the value of y when x is two three times two squared plus one is going to be 13 so we'll have 13 here. And when x is greater than 2, this is the part of graph they're talking about. So now fx is going to be greater than 13. fx or y is going to be greater than 13. And again, if there was an equals to sign here, we would have placed an equals to sign here. Now, what if the domain is something between the, around the turning point? So let's say uh, X is between negative one and two. Let's say X is between negative one to two. Okay, so we remember that when X was negative one, FX was four, so we can see that it's 4. And when x was 2, fx was 13. So this is the part of the graph we're concerned about between these two values. So starting from here till here, this is the graph. So the graph uh, here, the value of y of the graph is 4. But here it is 1. And then at the top, it's 13. So the values of y actually range between 
13 and 1, not 4 and 1. Because first it's 4, then it drops to 1, and then it rises to 13. So the range is actually between 1 and 13. Okay? Do not end up writing 4 and 13 because that would be incorrect. Because the minimum value the y can take in this range, in this domain, is 1. And the maximum value that y can take within this domain is 13. Okay. Also, one more thing. Since uh, this is not part of the domain and 2 is also not part of the domain, so uh, 4 and 13, they're not part of the range. But this... Uh, one is part of the range. So you must write an equals to sign over here. This is equals to um, fx is uh, greater than equals to one and just less than 13. You must write an equals to sign here because this value is part of the domain. Because, sorry, the range. Because the domain is from four till 13. So in between this, you get a value of x, which was 0. So x is, x is equals to 0 is part of the domain. So its corresponding value of y, which is 1, is part of the range. So you must write an equals to sign up. Okay, so you have to be very careful. If you mess this sign up, and if it's a one mark question, you get 0. Okay, and if there was an equals to sign here with 2, then we would have added equals to with 13 as well. So this would have been the answer. Okay, now let's take a look at another example for domain and range. Okay, so now the function is Three x square plus twelve x plus seventeen. Okay. In the first part, what they'll do is they'll ask you to change it into completed square form. And you'll do that. We've done that in the chapter of quadratics. So this would give uh, 3x squared plus 12x plus 17 becomes 3x plus 2 whole square plus 5. Okay. Let me double check. 3x plus 2 whole square plus 5. Yes, that is correct. Now, if you plot this graph, plotting actually really helps with finding the domains and range, especially the natural domain and the natural range. Okay, so the turning point we know is going to be negative 2 comma 5. So somewhere over here, negative 2 comma 5 is the turning point. It's going to be a U-shaped graph and the y-intercept is going to be 17. So we get something like this. Oops. So this would be 17. So we get a U-shaped graph like this. Okay. Now, what is going to be the natural domain? So X can take any value. You can see X has positive values. X has negative value. X can also be zero. So again, X is an element of real number. But Y is starts from five and goes all the way till infinity. So for the range, you have to write fx or y is greater than and equals to five because five does lie on this graph. So five is part of the range. That is the natural domain and the natural range of the function. Now, again, just like the previous part, if they restrict the domain and let's say they say that x is uh, less than minus 4. So then that means they're talking about this region here, x is minus 4. And when x is less than minus 4, that's this region. And graphically, it's going to be all of this region. 
So let's see what is the value of fx when x is minus 4. So at minus 4, we get 3 times bracket minus 4 plus 2 whole squared uh, plus 5. This gives 17. Okay, at minus 4, we're getting 17. So this would, we can already see this is 17. Okay, so then fx is going to be actually greater than 17 because this is the region that we're talking about now. When x is less than minus 4, fx is greater than 17. All right. Again, another domain. So what if the domain is between around the turning point? Let's say it start from minus 4 and goes till uh, 1. So we know when x is minus 4, the graph's value is 17. It starts from here and then it starts going down and it goes still where x is 1. Let's say x is 1 here. So it goes still here. Now let's see what is the value of y when x is 1. So 3 times 1 plus 2 whole squared plus 5. That gives 32. So we have 32 here. So the value starts with 17, goes down, and then goes till 32. But the range would be this. This is the minimum value of the range, which is 5. And the highest value of the range is 32. With 5, we must add an equals to sign because this is part of the domain. And it goes till 32. Sorry, we have to write fx here or y here. And then it goes till 32. But with 32, I'm not going to write an equals to sign because there's no equals to sign here. So this is the range of this function if the domain is between minus 4 till 1. Okay. Another function. Okay, the next function is going to be square root of x plus 3. Okay. Square root of x plus 3. Okay. I'm going to draw this graphically as well. So you need to know that the graph of square root of x looks like this. And if it is x plus 3, then the same graph will move 3 units to the uh, left. So we'll have minus 3 here, and we'll have a graph like this. It's the same logic as the graph of x squared looks like this. But the graph of x plus 3 whole squared actually goes 3 units to the left. So it looks like this. So it's exactly the same transformation on square root of x graph. Okay, so that's the graph. Now we can clearly tell that the values of x start from minus 3. They cannot be less than minus 3. So the graph or the natural domain starts from minus 3. x is greater than and equals to minus 3. Even without the graph, you should be able to do this because we know that inside the square root, the values can be either 0 or bigger than 0. Because otherwise, the calculator will give you a math error if you take negative value inside the square root. So then that gives x is greater than or equals to minus 3. So even without a graph, this was doable. Okay, now we need values of y. And from the graph, we can tell that the values of y are always greater than 0. So we're going to write y or fx 
is greater than and equals to zero. Okay, moving on. Restricted domain. So what if the domain is between zero equals to sign here x and let's say three. That means we're talking about this region zero to three and we're talking about this range. So when x is zero, we have square root of three as y. And when x is three, we have square root of six as y. So the curve is starting from square root of three and going till square root of six. So we're going to write fx or y is in between. With this side, we're going to write an equals to sign square root of three. And with this side, we will not write a square root of sign, uh, equals to sign, sorry. And we get a square root of six. Here. Okay, that's an example of restricted uh, domain and range for fx is equals to square root of x plus three. Okay, moving on to another function, five upon x. Okay, five upon x. Okay, so we know from O levels that the graph of one over x looks like this. The graph of five over x also looks like this. So they have a similar shape. So it's the graph of, let's say this is the graph of five over x. Okay, what is the natural domain of this function? x cannot be zero. Look, there's no graph getting x is equals to zero. So x cannot be zero. Also, we can see even without a graph, if you take zero in the denominator, you get a math error. So you cannot have zero in the denominator. Other than that, you can have any value of x. You can have a positive value, you can have a negative value, but not x is equals to zero. So you write the natural domain is x is an element of real numbers, but x is not equals to zero. Okay, what about the natural range? Again, from the graph, we can see that y has every value except this line is called y is equals to zero. So y can also have any value y or fx, but it cannot be equals to zero. You may write y here or you may write fx here. All right. What if you cannot figure out the graph of the function and you want to do this question without having the graph with you? So let's say we do not have this graph. Then we need to look at this equation. And just by looking at it, we can clearly tell that x can have any value except for 0 because that will give us a math error. So the natural domain is there. But what about the natural range? What you can do is, a trick around this is that if you cannot tell what is the range of the function uh, and you do not have a sketch in mind, then what you have to do, you quickly have to find inverse of the function. We know that from O levels, it's going to be y is equals to five over x then swap x and y. And then this is the inverse function, but you replace uh, x with y. Sorry, y with x. So this is the inverse of the function. Now, what is the domain of this? The domain of this is also the same. It is a, all the real numbers, but x cannot be equals to zero. So that is going to be the answer here as well. So now you're going to replace x with y, and you're going to say that the natural range is y is an element of real numbers and y cannot be zero. Let me recap what we did. We uh, found the f inverse of x and then found the domain of that. 
we found the domain of f inverse of x and then we changed x with y or even you can change x with fx and that is equals to the natural range of this function. Okay. Moving on, let's look at a restricted domain. Okay, let's say the restricted domain is from minus three till two. No, minus three till minus two. Okay, that means they're talking about this region. Let's say x minus three here and minus two here. So they're talking about this region. Let's find the values of y here. So when x is minus three, five is actually equals to five over minus three. And when x is minus two, it is, it is equals to five over minus two. So notice that the graph is actually falling. That means the higher value is negative five over three. So you write that here, negative five over three comes over here. And the smaller value is negative 5 over 2 that you write over here. But 5 over 2 we got from this and it had an equals to sign with it. So you write an equals to sign. Okay. Let me give you an example of another uh, restricted domain. What if it starts from minus 3 and there's an equals to sign here, let's say. And then it goes till zero, x is zero. Okay. So again, at minus three, we know the value is negative five over three. At minus three, this value here is negative five over three. So the graph is starting from negative five over three, and then it starts approaching zero. When, if five, upon zero, that is going to be math error. That means it's actually infinity. So it just dips down and goes till infinity. So this would be negative infinity in fact. So it started with minus five over three and it has gone till negative infinity. That means you're going to write the range like this. Fx is just smaller than minus five over three because it goes till negative infinity. So you don't have to write from negative five over three till negative infinity. You just have to write smaller than minus five over three. And with minus three, we had an equals to sign. So over here, we're going to write an equals to sign as well. Okay, let's take a look at another natural domain. I mean, restricted domain. Um, Let's say x starts from zero and goes till five. And right, let me write equals to here. Okay, that means we're talking about this region. It starts from zero, so it like it starts from here, and then starts coming down, down till where till five. So let's say five is over here. So here's five, and then it goes up. And that's infinity. And when x is 5, y will be 5 upon 5, which is 1. So now the graph starts from infinity and starts coming down. This is infinity. And it comes down till what? Till 1. Till 5 over 5, which is 1. So now you're going to say that fx is, how do you write that x? is between one to infinity. You just write fx is greater than one. So we're going to write fx is greater than one. But how did we get that one? We got one through this five because five over five was one and there's an equals to sign with it. So we'll also write an equals to sign with it. So when the domain is between zero to five and five is included, then the range is greater than one. Okay. Another example. Okay. 
Okay, so next example is 5 upon x minus 3. fx equals 5 upon x minus 3. Okay, now let's try to do this without the graph. Okay, so if although the graph would be very helpful, but for now let's try to do this without the graph because in the exam you won't have to, you won't have the graph. If you can sketch it, great, but if you can't, you'll have to learn how to do this without the graph. Okay, so the natural domain would be X can be anything, but notice that this cannot be 3 because then you'll get 3 minus 3, 0. And if you get a 0 in the denominator, that's the math error. So X minus 3 cannot be equals to 0. The denominator cannot be equals to 0. So that means X cannot be equals to 3. So the natural domain is X is an element of real numbers, but X cannot be equals to 3. Okay. Now, how do I find the natural range without the graph? Okay, so I taught you a trick that what you can do is find inverse of this function and then find the domain of the inverse and then replace the x with fx or y's. Okay, so how do we find the range, the sorry, the inverse of five upon x minus three? I'm going to swap the places of x minus 3 and y. Then we're going to make x the subject. This is all O levels. Okay. And then f inverse of x equals 5 upon x plus 3. So now we can see that x can have all values, but x cannot be equals to 0. So then we're going to say y or fx can have all values, but fx or y cannot be 0. Okay, now let me try to show this to you graphically. Okay, so let's first draw the graph of 1 of 5 upon x. 5 upon x looks like this. This is 5 over x. But if you do 5 over x minus 3, that means you are moving this function 3 right. So this was the asymptote first. Now this is going to move 3 right. So we'll have an asymptote. Asymptote is the line where the graph cannot touch. This is going to be the asymptote. So the graph moves three unit to the right. So we get a graph like this. This is the graph of five upon X minus three. So now notice that the domain makes more sense that X can have any value but three and also Y can have any value but zero because notice that Y, there's no Y over here. It's either over a, a little above this value zero or a little below this value zero. Okay, now let's restrict the domain. Let's say that the domain is from 4 to 5. So x is between 4 to 5. 4 to 5, and let's write n equals to sign with 5. That means we're probably talking about this region, 4 to 5. So the graph drops like this. So there's some value of y when x is 4, and then there's some value of y when x is 5. Okay, so when x is 4, we get 5 upon 1 from here, which is just 5. So this is 5. And when x is uh, 5, then we get 5 upon 2 here, which is 2.5. So fx is between 5 to 2.5. Okay, one of these will have an equals to sign. Which one? That we got from 5. 
So when we substituted 5 here, we actually got 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So we write in equals to sign here. Okay. Let me give you another domain. What if the domain is x is starts from uh, let's say 2 and goes till 3. Okay, so when x is 2, let's say somewhere over here, then the graph is equals to minus 5. This value will be equals to minus 5. Because when you write 2 here, you get 5 over minus 1, which is minus 5. So the graph starts from minus 5. And then it goes till 3. This is where 3 is and the graph drops down. So gro keeps dropping down and goes till negative infinity. So you're going to write that the fx is less than negative 5. Okay. And there was no equals to sign with the domain. So we do not write an equals to sign with the domain. If there was an equals to sign here, we would have write, written an equals to sign. Okay. That's all for domain and range of the function.